Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Good evening to you. Uh, we have some updates. It's on NOAA. The, the 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern is out, and it is showing that it is moving uh, sustained winds of 35 miles per hour now. They were 30 miles per hour, so it is starting to strengthen now. And not only that, the movement is now, instead of west-northwest, it is now north-northwest at 8 miles per hour. So it is starting to do its northward uh, push. Now, when you can expect tropical storm force winds uh, from this, because it is expected to be a strong tropical storm on the edge of being a hurricane, but still only a tropical storm. Uh, Friday after 8 p.m., Cayman Islands, uh, and as well as Jamaica. Jamaica, you're on the edge. You're not going to get much out of this, but two, three inches of rainfall, maybe four inches tops. Uh, but Cayman Islands, you're going to feel it after 8 p.m. tomorrow night. And Florida, it'll be on the tip of Florida by Sunday at 8 a.m. Now, let me show you some video you got from Honduras where they're flooding. These poor people, man, they, they got it really bad. There's a lot of messed up roads, broken bridges. There's all kind of problems that they've been having, and it's been crazy for them. So God bless you if you're in Honduras, Guatemala, Belize, any of these areas that's having these problems, Nicaragua. God bless you greatly, man. I hope that everything gets back greatly on your feet. I did hear, I believe, somewhere around 29 people has died so far unfortunately from hurricane tropical storm ada so that is a bad thing as well but they are starting to get out of there and they're trying to save everybody as much as they can so god bless you honduras i do hope everything does get better for you now i am showing on a velocity potential anomaly that we do have our our area where we have in our issue right now but i am showing we still have a bigger issue going to pop up by middle of november and I did show you that the other day, how I did show it went down all the way to a 953 millibars. So we don't, we'll see if that has to play out still. But I am showing that that is going to be an issue we got to follow. Now, as far as that uh, ADA's guidance, the normal guidance, you, you can see all the models. H Wharf brings it all the way to Florida uh, Panhandle. But the, the usual track showing that it is going to go towards Cuba, then take a western push into the Gulf of Mexico we could we have a really big dominant high over here and that's why it's going to stop it from going any further to the east and it's going to make a sharp push off to the west now if you look at the, the uh, potentials for all the angles here's all the models <laughs> it's just crazy and all over the place but if you just pay attention to the first few days and we'll just take this a few days at a time guys uh, 48 hours it will be here and in 84 hours four days a little bit less it will, will be in cuba and it will be an issue however gfs is showing that it is kind of moving quicker now this is your h wharf of what you can expect this is your excuse me this is your 10 meter winds velocity so what you can expect as far as damage and as you can see in 48 hours cayman islands you're going to be getting anywhere from 30 to 40 miles per hour winds uh, maybe even 50. I mean, it, it's showing that it's at 60 knot winds right here, but it's only in the small wind field. You are in a yellow to the dark yellow, and that's 34 to 38 knot winds, so that's somewhere around 45 to 50 miles an hour. Now, as we go through the GEFS and see exactly what's going on with these ensembles, this shows you exactly the possibilities that this storm could be and where it could group up at. And if you notice, once it hits Cuba, it starts splitting up on whether it can go in the Gulf or whether it's going to go over Florida. And then as we go to the five-day outlook, this is what we have, guys. This is as far as we're going, as far as five days. This thing's going to twirl and circle around so much, I'd hate to go any further knowing that it is most likely going to change. Now, here's your, your 31 members, so you can see exactly the potential. I'm going to play it for you so you can see it go out. If you want to follow a different track, just back up the video a few seconds and watch it go. A lot of these models do show that it does go in the Gulf. A couple show it goes on the east of Florida. And then a couple shows that it also goes up the spine all the way up Florida. So there is a possibility as well. Now here's a, a GEFS look from the Gulf of Mexico. This is your total precipitation of what you're going to get within the next five days. And Cayman Islands, it looks like you're looking somewhere around 7 to 9 inches. So be aware, it's going to be off in the, in the, in the ocean. But as far as your island, I mean, you're going to be getting rain. So please be aware. And like I said, Jamaica, it looks like you're getting somewhere around 2 to 4 inches, maybe even 1 to 4 inches. So be aware. 
Uh, Southern Florida, as well as the Bahamas, you can get anywhere from 5 to 7 inches of rainfall in this brown area. From the red all the way to the light red, you are looking anywhere from 2 to 5 inches. And then from the yellow all the way to the light blue, that's anywhere from 1 to 2, 1 to 3 inches of rainfall. Now, if you look at the 700 millibar level of the humidity, you can see exactly what goes on with this storm. And here's our storm right here. This is that red spot right here. And if you notice, right around 48 hours, it starts getting dry air wrapped around it right when it gets past Florida and turns left. And I think that's what chokes this thing out and really kills it in the Gulf of Mexico. That would be a nice scenario. I could deal with that one. And here's a low-pressure look from the GFS. That way you can see what the GFS is saying. The GFS is saying it is literally in 72 hours that it is going to be in Cuba, not 84 hours. And it's going to be faster and we're going to get it sooner. And it is going to be a, a, it is going to post a tropical storm threat for southern Florida as far as winds and flooding. And then it goes out into the Gulf in the five days. Now if you look at the precipital water so you can see where you're going to be at in 36 hours, Cayman Islands, according to the GFS, uh, the Cayman Islands, you're going to be looking at some heavy rainfall for you. And then the GFS also brings it towards Jamaica to where you might be getting more rainfall. The rest of the models don't show that, but that's why I showed this one. That way you can see that uh, Jamaica as well as the Bahamas. If the GFS is correct and it gets there faster, y'all will be getting more rainfall. But if you notice, all this rain goes all over Florida. Even one of the models shows that it stays over Florida for days. Now here's a GFS V16 parallel, and you can't get too many angles with this. But the reason why I showed you this is I want to show you something that's a possibility. Now the GFS V16 shows that in, in 84 hours, southern Florida, you're going to be in the rain, and it's going to stay around you and circle around you for a few days. And here it is at 144 hours, and you are still in the heavy rainfall. The dry air and the cold front hits it. And you are still in a rainfall for, let's see, let's go all the way up, almost the full 10 days. About eight days, you are going to be in rainfall. And then you see down here on the bottom, right after that, when that storm leaves, that another possible uh, tropical storm could post a threat for the Yucatan Peninsula. You know, you can see it here on the millibar level. You can see it goes past, uh, past Jamaica, past Cuban Islands. And then it goes by Florida, a 988, 984, which is a strong tropical storm. It's on the edge of being a hurricane, but it stays a tropical storm to the last minute. And it looks like it might turn into a hurricane at the last second. That's a possibility. But after that one goes away, you can see another low pressure forms up uh, below the Cayman Islands. And it gets down to a tropical storm strength going towards the Yucatan Peninsula. So we can keep our eye on that in case that does form up as well. Now the NavGem, NavGem shows something different. The NavGem shows, yes, it goes to the curve, and all these, all these systems are going to curve hard west because of this dominant high pressure. But the NavGem has it down to 977 millibars and 976. And I tell you what, Florida, that is a strong, not strong, but it's a hurricane uh, going all the way up down uh, your spine. The whole spine of Florida will feel all the way to 981 millibars leaving you. So you, it will be a week. But it will be anywhere from a very strong tropical storm to a very weak Cat 1 hurricane, according to the NavGem, going all down Florida. And that's what I have for you guys. That's just an update for the five days. I didn't want to put anything super long. I just want to give you an update on what we do have. And if you do like the content I provide, please hit that subscribe button. This is every day. I love my subs, and I want to help as much as I can. Matter of fact, I'd like to give you all a blessing today. Revelations. 5. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on a throne a book written within and on the, on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much. Because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, 
the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of their them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beast and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven, and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are, are in them, heard I saying, Blessing, and honor, and glory, and power, be unto him that sitteth upon a throne, and unto the Lamb for ever and ever, and the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Amen, guys. I hope you all have a great rest of y'all night. God bless you all. I'll give you all an update in the morning of what's going on. I would expect it to probably be a tropical storm by then. If not then, by tomorrow afternoon. This thing is, I am showing signs there is a chance of, of intensification. I am showing the water is 90 to 92 degrees. So it is a possibility. We just got to wait and see what happens. So do me a favor. Like the video if I helped you in any way. And share the video, please, with someone that you think may need information or just may need to hear the word of God. Amen. God bless you all. All glory does go to God. <laughs> Amen.